Hi friends, I'm Annie F. Downs. Let's read the Gospels. The Gospels are the first four books of the New Testament in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These are the stories of Jesus Christ's life on earth, the friendships, the parables, the sacrifices, the meals, the miracles. I've said that over 300 times and I am still not sick of it. I love the Gospels. Each month this year, we've gotten to read all four books. Y'all go ahead, subscribe today. Join us as we finish reading the Gospels together in 2023 and then kick off one chapter a day in January to March of 2024. Here's how today's gonna work. I'm gonna read three chapters to you. You can listen or read along in your own Bible and then I'll pray and that's it. Today is December 14th and I will be reading Matthew chapters four through six. And this month I'm reading from the NASB. Matthew four. Then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he then became hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Then the devil took him along into the holy city and had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple. And he said to him, If you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written, he will give his angels orders concerning you and on their hands, they will lift you up so that you do not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, on the other hand, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him along to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, go away, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and behold, angels came and began to serve him. Now, when Jesus heard that John had been taken into custody, he withdrew into Galilee and leaving Nazareth, he came and settled in Capernaum, which is by the sea in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali. This happened so that what was spoken through Isaiah, the prophet would be fulfilled. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali by the way of the sea on the other side of the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who were sitting in darkness saw a great light and those who were sitting in the land and shadow of death upon them, a light dawned from that time. Jesus began to preach and say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, as Jesus was walking by the sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter and his brother, Andrew casting a net into the sea. For they were fishermen, and he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus was going about in all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every sickness among the people. And the news about him spread throughout Syria and they brought to him all who were ill, those suffering with various diseases and severe pain, demon possessed, people with epilepsy and people who were paralyzed and he healed them. Large crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis and Jerusalem and Judea and from beyond the Jordan. Matthew 5. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain and after he sat down, his disciples came to him and he opened his mouth and began to teach them saying, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Blessed are the gentle for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad for your reward in heaven is great. For in this same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by people. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. 
nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Your light must shine before people in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Do not presume that I came to abolish the law or the prophets. I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke of a letter shall pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever nullifies one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever keeps and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that unless your righteousness far surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that the ancients were told, you shall not murder, and whoever commits murder shall be answerable to the court. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be answerable to the court. And whoever says to his brother, you good for nothing, shall be answerable to the Supreme Court. And whoever says, you fool, shall be guilty enough to go into the fiery hell. Therefore, if you are presenting your offering at the altar, and there you remember that your brother has something against you, leave your offering there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and present your offering. Come to good terms with your accuser quickly while you are with him on the way to court so that your accuser will not hand you over to the judge and the judge to the officer and you will not be thrown into prison. Truly, I say to you, you will not come out of there until you have paid up the last quadrants. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Now, if your right eye is causing you to sin, tear it out and throw it away from you. For it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand is causing you to sin, cut it off and throw it away from you. For it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. Now it was said, whoever sends his wife away is to give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except for the reason of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that the ancients were told you shall not make false vows, but shall fulfill your vows to the Lord. But I say to you, take no oath at all, neither by heaven, for it is the throne of God, nor by the earth, for it is the footstool of his feet, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, nor shall you take an oath by your head, for you cannot make a single hair white or black, but make sure your statement is yes, yes, or no, no. Anything beyond these is of evil origin. You have heard that it was said, eye for eye and tooth for tooth. But I say to you, do not show opposition against an evil person. But whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other toward him also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak also. Whoever forces you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks of you and do not turn away from him who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may prove yourselves to be sons of your father who is in heaven. For he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Even the tax collectors, do they not do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Even the Gentiles, do they not do the same? Therefore, you shall be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Matthew 6. Take care not to practice your righteousness in the sight of people, to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. So when you give to the poor, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, so that they will be praised by people. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward in full. But when you give to the poor, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your charitable giving will be in secret and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you are not to be like the hypocrites for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so that they will be seen by people. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward in full. But as for you, when you pray, Go into your inner room, close your door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. 
And when you are praying, do not use thoughtless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. So do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then in this way, Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive other people for their offenses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive other people, then your Father will not forgive your offenses. Now, whenever you fast, do not make a gloomy face as the hypocrites do, for they distort their faces so that they will be noticed by people when they are fasting. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward in full. But as for you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that your fasting will not be noticed by people, but by your father who is in secret and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in or steal for where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. So then if your eye is clear, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. So if the light that is in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. For this reason, I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink nor for your body as to what you will put on. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the sky, that they do not sow nor reap nor gather crops into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more important than they? And which of you, by worrying, can add a single day to his lifespan? And why are you worried about clothing? Notice how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor, nor do they spin thread for cloth. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Do not worry then saying, what are we to eat or what are we to drink or what are we to wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided to you. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. That is Matthew 4 through 6 in the NASB. Let's pray together. Jesus, I come back to this the end of the chapter a lot in my life of what I need to worry about, what I don't need to worry about and what is mine to hold and what is not mine to hold. And um, in the words of John Eldridge, we give everyone and everything to you, Jesus, that you tell us not to worry about tomorrow. So we won't. The thing that is on our schedule tomorrow that seems intimidating or scary, the thing that will surprise us tomorrow, we don't know is coming. We won't worry about it. We are choosing to trust you. Um, for the rest of this year, for 2024, we just want to make it the the season of trust. So we love you, Jesus. We trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>